Sculptures of the Deranged. The dead live amongst those who may not be kind enough to have such a fate. His angels fall from heaven and as God shifts the views from his being, the graveyard fills and fills. As death fails, so too does sanity. The departed's domain. There is a home. A home for those who escape the prison of the damned. To live a white life without the constant tormenting of their soul by the keeper of the dead. While only figureheads, those titled the Endurers of Heresy, are cast away from the Citadel for their views against the deranged. To the Citadel, those with sympathy are left behind. Undignified Burrow, once a town, a bustling era, area of commerce and commandos, commandosalism? <laughs> the impact had left it to rot. From those outside, it appears as a normal town, not different from the others, but as civi civilizations do, the remnants of old shatter as the new build from the ashes. The deep chaos unfolds as the reaches of hell sprout from the earth and into the darkest parts of the oceans. Most of these folds are, un are undiscovered, as danger lurks within every quarter. Powerful adversaries live within the deep, and yet none of them know their origin. Salverdi's Carnival. With joy, I dance alongside my compatriots, yet a sense of urgency grows within me. A sense of not knowing my place, not knowing who, where or who I am. I forget my name long ago, but the thrill of the carnival keeps me alive, yet as I dance. He watches over me. I see his eyes, and I see his smile. He is void with vigorous indignation in his eyes. Ruins of Ephitricus. With days long past comes the creation of history. What might be rarely known now might be commonplace years ahead. What might be commonplace now might be taboo in the next generations. Existence falters, and existence grows. The ruins grow. The knowledge seeps out through the cracks. We are reverting. Domain of the Seekers. The right hands to God himself. The Seekers live without life, like husks. They perform their menial tasks without a sense of light within their eyes. As uncanniness forms, as the lives are torn away from them, they are living with glorious regrets. Or do they not live at all? Church of the Holy Undoing. The constant pitter-patter of the rain will be on my undoing. It is all I hear. As the soundlessness fills my head. Amongst my fellow deacons, I am just one. I stand with the overflowing dead as they preach the undoing of the Holy One. The branded symbol of the damned flashes beneath my eyes while all I can hear. It's the tapping of the rain against the glass windows and stone walls. Why must I rest alongside my fallen brethren? Points of impact. This is where it happened, my friend. This is where all life changed for us. We still haven't found out where this crater come from. But we all know is that some new form of eldritch life sprouted out of it. It's cool, but at the same time, morbid. I know the government is trying to cover it up, but it's way too big of an actual life-changing thing to even try and cover up, so they gave up. It's not bad though, it's not like some world-ending creature is going to come out of it, yet. Taken from the 2008 online video, me and the impact for Johnny. City of the Frenzied. The city, the citizens of the city weep, for they know not their purpose. They tried to survive amongst the dead, but the skinless will not let them. A life in the city is a life without true existence. While the world closes its doors to the citizens of the city, the survivors only gain more corrupting eldritch power. The bog, poison, stretching for miles as it gasps for air. My lungs would not let me inhale the putrid fumes of the swampy hellscape. I see my comrades around me, and all of them are dead. 
the liquid on the swamp tears in my flesh, and as the light on my eyes burn away, so too does my skin. World below the bog. A civil civilization was built under the bog for the protection of the swamp's inhabitants before the impact struck. What they didn't know was that these inhabitants would be mutated to the abominations they are now. Without the equipment, entering here means certain death. The civilization must be built around efficient materials to stay out of the sticky, sickly fumes. Therefore, it seems a utopia of technology, but is just sim but is simply just horrified people trying to survive. Beneath the citadel, beneath the center of the city, is a dangerous land. The reven renovations made to the citadel has had expanded beneath to fit thousands of people to live. A utopia, yet untapped by human hands. Too many people have left the city of Orsans right before the impact did the announcement, and none wanted to return. Therefore, the basement of the citadel remains a dark, open place with nothing but the sound of the beast that lurk within. Salverdi's Quarters the quarters of the beast himself is now an uninhabited great home within the citadel, a maze-like area with the soulless guards keeping the beast area safe from any intruding beings. Only one man still lives within the crevice of the household, and that would be the beast's assistant. Be wary as you traverse the corners of his home, for you lack an idea of what or where may live in within the walls. Within the Citadel. Citadel Terminal Connection Status on. Welcome. New meshes from Salverdi the Figurehead. To all my loyal compatriots, I have felt so inclined to bring a reward for your forthcoming. But as you remain nameless, you shall also remain completely equal in stature and completely perfect. But for the next few days, I will be revamping the rules of the Citadel's within to feel more comfortable for anyone that might come stop by. I may have become a beast, but this does not mean I have lost my sympathy. Citadel Terminal Connection Status Off At Impact's Peak And as I snuck my way to the top of the Citadel, I saw a strange sight. This might have been the climax of my life because I had completed my life school. I saw the beautiful stars in the book filled planetarium at the peak that shuddered through the clouds. This might have been the most elegant view of the world I have ever seen. They say the sky's the limit, but this sheer monstrous tower had surpassed even the sky. It's like I was in space, though mysteriously there is a ladder. Not sure what would happen to someone if they went outside of the building at this height, but they would likely die. What would any of the seekers need to get to the peak of the citadel for? Excerpt taken from the autobiography of the screamer's assistant. The final lament. Climbing to the peak, I see a grand sight. And as I scale the ladder, my eyes glow bright. A view of pure stars, heaven, and the blinding light. But what might, but what might be a way to describe my fright? As the peak of the world is the stool in which I stand, as a surge of knowledge becomes white at what I understand, as the vastness utopia of my city continues to expand, I feel as if I can crush it all within the palm of my hand. But when I escape the source, my mind begins to recall, my skin melts and my flesh begins to fall, my brain sputters and the voices come with from the walls. What have I done to deserve this all? But my, abdominal, but my abominable transformation begins and grows. I start to become somebody nobody knows. And my insight of the great beyond seems to bloom like a rose. My human form begins to decompose. I am the beast, the being of the nothing. And as my pride grows, thus begins the forthcoming. Boss Descriptions Moloch, Keeper of the Dead as the scythe of the creature quivers ever so slightly, the head of the undead creature is sliced off without any pain from the victim. As a keeper of dead, Mun must lead the tortured souls of the 
after life into a quick and painless death. Though death is a holy practice in Ephesicus, the dead who are let living is disgraced, called creatures of the unknown, and creatures damned by God himself. They are ones who have lost their minds. The keepers of the dead are those who let death mean death, and they are left to stay alive, only allowed to be killed by themselves when they feel their duty is up. Though being a keeper of the dead has its benefits, an immortal life is one of the tra- is one of tranquility, yet loneliness. The torn apostles twelve, the insider, the malevolent, the malevolent, the false deity, the adjudicator, the dethroned, the devourer, the enigma, the harboring, the harbinger, the priest, the harlot, the philosopher, and the wrathful. Though all named, they are treated nameless. The apostles are those who have followed the teachings of the beast. They were condemned for doing so. The teachings were, until severity was put into rule, a blasphemy. The masses thought it was against God's will, that is, before they were slaughtered and deformed into mindless beasts. The apostles and those who followed them were not transformed into abominations, but the abominable teachings they were taught, the sacrifices made in your name, you would rather them be the beasts. Guardian of the Deep The Guardian of the Deep is a serpent told in the tales written before any human had sought the throne of Ephichicus with everlasting, indescribable power. Those who fight the serpent only live because she is kept as a test of strength for those to pass on to the next trials that the Deep holds. The serpent is benevolent and cares much for life. Yet those who have seen her are sought with discomfort and discontent. This is due to the fact that the serpent is a god. Gods in this reality are not meant to be seen. Yet the serpent, the serpent is aberration. Once meant to be a great beast soaring through the heavens, God himself struck her down and now she lives within the folds of the underwater caverns and lakes within the great underbelly of the burrow. And as she waits, she thinks to herself when her deceased God shall come back to her. Abyssus, shrouded by the dark. As a creature waits for its prey, it lingers on what could have done with its broken life, a son of the serpent. Abyssus wait, awaits for, at further depths of the deep to wait for less intelligent creatures to enter his maw. His brother had become an apostle to the seekers themselves who have since fallen. And his sister had become one of the first before Salverti himself. Abyssus himself, he awaits at the bottom of the everlasting deep, chained and shackled to the ocean floor until a damned soul can put him out of his misery. After being betrayed by his own siblings and compatriots for being weak, an eternity and the crushing depths of the deep could change a man. Burnt shadow of Silverty, roaming the streets of the dilapidated carnival. The shade keeps a watchful eye on its w- poor workers. The shade sheds light on what the seekers would have been like. The imbalance of power caused by the impact in Silverty's Abyssir would not have come alight. This being created by Silverty, it not only sh- it, uh, it shares not only his skill but a fraction of his power. It takes akin to the screamer who raised it and fights to keep its carnival afloat. The Angel of Death, roaming the streets of the outskirts of the ruined Aphichicus lay the beast that those with their senses still fear as a hazy fog shrouds the broken landscape those who do not suspect it may meet their death to a poor creature who can only find its way by killing in indigenous beings who are undeserving of their untimely deaths surviving in the ruins of Ephichicus is not an easy task but living within the city is far more dangerous than simply living among a few dangerous creatures the Screamer, Lance, and Jack 
last of his kind. Void are those who betray the council at this point in time. The screamer and the hollow are easy numbers to account for that statistic. After leaving, after leaving the Seeker's Council in the city of Orisons, after Salverdi's tyrannical rise to power, they were permanently exiled from the city. Now, they wait for any beings of the damned to arrive at their domain alongside their followers. Their mission? Find one worthy to fight Salverdi and take down the city of the Frenzied. Those of that powered are killed in the domain. Those of little power are asked to join the resistance, and those of true power become the one destined to destroy the throne. Fallen Angel, Bilal. The Church of the Holy Undoing is a hellish place, set away from the placitated depths of the city of the Frenzied, yet in its own atmosphere, the disquietude Within it sleeps fallen angel, cast from the citadel and forced to be one raised by the exhumed deacons and bishops of the church. It is left in shackles by those ungrateful beasts and is not allowed to descend back into heaven, nor allowed to be cast back down to hell. To be undone is to lose your, lose your destiny. To lose your destiny is to lose your very reason of life. The fallen angel has lost all reasons to exist, yet fights anyway. To him, to kill him is to grant sanctuary to his soul. The Source None have seen the inside of the Source and kept their sanity to tell the tale. None but Salverdi, who at the time was still a normal human, slowly losing his prime. Among those who have seen the sure power of the Source is the former Seeker, the Screamer Lance. Within the Seeker's domain, he permanently still resides within his dwelling, pondering the astral and ancestral planes and reading the dark inscriptions to one day find purpose within them. The Source breaks the minds of all those who look at within it, and the Source is often even used for ritual sacrifice, as no normal being can withstand such power within their feeble bodies. Dagon, unfound apostle. He is a lost soul within the city, betrayed by and immediately replaced after his banishment from the Twelve Apostles. The unfound one had decided to bring wrath unto those who roamed the destroyed city of Orisons. The, si the frenzied place is a place of institution and unbrought order, but the unfound apostle hopes to bring justice and order to the broken city and repair by any means necessary, even if this means the deaths of those within the cruelty's hands. Creature of the Bog Below the bog is a civilization of creatures who have learned to survive the existence that comes with living underneath a toxic swamp of poisonous gas that could penetrate and simply dissolve the lungs, but not even they could kill the creature. As a malevolent god watching over the swamp of Ephichicus, the release of power by the being's assistant had caused a surge of damage the creature's very mind and body, regurgitating its body over and over again into a stateless mass of disease, flesh, and poison. Though, it can change this appearance to be one of a god, because though this god is tainted, it is yet to lose its power. Lawgiver of the Frozen these laws shall be just, the tyrannical legislator states, as an indoctrinating piece of propaganda to exploit the people into entering his regime. The lawbringer is third to Salverdi, the fourth being Behemoth and Abaddon, the second being the assistant. Aphichicus feels like a lawless land, but this is only because of the deluded ideals of the lawbringer attempting to make the people believe in his idea of a land where chaos is just and order is a sacrament where should not strive to gain, for it is impossible to reach such a perfect goal. And as a being of the ice, 
The only order to be gained is from those frozen within time itself. Unholy being's assistant, tending to the figurehead's business is not such an easy task. The figurehead is the one that has gained such an intelligence to create and destroy worlds within an instant, but spends his time pondering within the skies, a mind unknown to anyone as what might be lurking inside. The assistant is a powerful being, bestowed a piece of Salverde's power himself, but with this power commits acts of tyranny and ruthless dictatorship. An example of this tyranny is the creation of the bog itself. Many years ago, the bog was simply an area on a Fichicus that concerned a swamp and its inhabitants. But an outrage caused by differing political opinions and a voice of the people had caused the assistant to convert the swamp into what today is known as the bog. Forgotten Archangels Guarding the peak of the citadel are the archangels who know not of their past nor of their future. Stuck in the present without memories, the, far the forgotten <laughs> archangels are begotten, shunned by all besides the one who would take them under their wing, Salverti. Though he is a cruel leader, he is not cruel to those who have been dealt unjust punishments. The archangels are made of stone, shall be forgotten to time, but not forgotten to the listeners. Behemoth and Abaddon, first before the destroyer. Abaddon fell from the heaven first, being the fire that covers the point of impact. Behemoth fell first, being the one who brought the ungodly form of life into Ephichicus. The fallen angels exp expul expulsion from heaven is what it caused the source's arrival into the desperate world and tore the living world asunder. Heaven and Hell's gates were locked. This new form of life had brought destruction or fright, and brought with it eternal life, be it a curse or a blessing. Today, Ephigicus lies in shambles, and none are left to open the gates of the afterlife. Salverti, Tyrant of Ephigicus. This is an excerpt taken from the speech of disciples spoken about by Salverti six days after the impact is struck. Someone needs to con take control here and study this power given to us. We've been experimenting. And as one may have guessed, death is no longer an option given to us. This does not mean you should test out that new gun on yourself or kill your neighbor, but neither does this mean that we will be able to affect them. The consequences of this new end of death can be catastrophic, and the crater that had been left within the northeast section of the city is not to be meddled with. Our scientists are doing our studies and are trying to deal with it as we speak. As of the foreseeable future, death has been completely eradicated. Unbeknownst to him, power corrupts. Salverdi, figurehead of chaos. This is outrageous. You're expecting us to take all of this power for what? Personal gain? No, of course not. So I mean, I'm just saying that. That's enough. If you expect this whole Republic thing to work, then it shouldn't involve getting more strength than what is necessary. Fine. If you don't believe in strength and those deserving of it, then these plans don't concern you. If you believe a Fidgigus to fall due to this end of death, then so be it. Leave. The Screamer, the Endling, the Observer, the Enigma all leave the room, never to return to the Citadel. The Lawbringer and the Assistant stay. The four who desert the city watch it ac across the line between the Orisons and the City of the Frenzied. The Lawbringer and the Assistant were left isolated to complete the duties that were given to them. The Council was left torn and tension grew. The Sovereign he was crowned under a new title, The Figurehead. DLC number one. Shores of the Celestials. The clear, blue waves crash into the reflective sand as the phantoms of the ill-fated look into the horizon. Their lives askew. The great sanctuary 
of golden existence breaks them free from their shackles and into the starlight. During the high tides, the shores act as a normal place of virtuous beauty. Yet, during the lower tides, one can see the mass graves of those who had died for the observatory, whether it be willing or reluctantly. Sacrifices must be made for the greater good, the observer believes. But if the mass gravestones and the abomination of flesh within give reason to doubt, then one has not seen the truth within the observatory. Phantom in White Out of those dedicated to the observatory, the Phantom in White is the most powerful of those devoted. As an amalgamation of two lost souls, they long for the protection of the observer. Morality is a controversial idea between people living within the city, but those without morality are, those, are the ones seen as powerful. With a sword and a rapier bestowed upon her from the observer, the protection of the confidentiality of the observatory is the only thing the Phantom in White lives for. In Hogwim Bury, the observer, after the figurehead si seizing of the throne, had tried to find how the source has been created. Though this endeavor of finding out what the source had come from in Hogwim had it was discovered, in Hogwim is a culmination of the essence of differing, powerful souls that have been extracted into a liquid form in Hogwim when put into the human body, transforms them into a being of that while grotesque and does an incredible amount of power. These abominations will leave their old forms behind, making the phantoms. Nobody knows the true process of the creation of Inhogwim besides the observer himself, though people suspect some of the ingredients to be of bodily stature. Incubation Chamber. For reading this, the observer will have likely killed me. I never knew what his name, the years I had worked for him, but he had to look to what I was working for. For years upon years, I mindlessly assisted with this creation of, I don't even know what they are, creatures, abominations, things that aren't, aren't meant to exist. This in hog women manufacturing gives life to what shouldn't be alive. There are hundreds of vats, and the ceaseless crying from some of them is something I can't get out of my head, but something I saw. At the very center of the room is what has intrigued me the most. Tubes entering a metal sphere filled with an hogwim, but in the center of that vat seemed to be the observer himself, and he was looking directly at me. Amalgamation of the ill-fated Experiment Log 10. I've done it. A perfect vessel to fit souls within. No phantoms have escaped. All of their minds coexist within this one being. And Hogwim is the future. None will be able to become frenzied, for the souls can be transported into one of these beings. Now all we need to do is find out how to get another soul into one of these vessels. Experiment Log number 11. This will be hard to clean up after. Blood covers my entire workspace. It seems that these vessels of flesh can only live for so long. It had been around 20 hours since the being was created, till when it had died. It does not matter. 20 hours is more than long enough to manufacture another body. Furthermore, you can see the phantoms around the island. They're simply walking around aimlessly. I shall attempt them to give them a new form. Planisphere Cavity as the tablet turns, so does the room. Availability is the key. The planisphere cavity is a fabled library. The tales of Ophichicus, only rivaled in spectacle with the mythical vessel of the heretic. The librarians, as phantoms of the observer, allow for the power and strength required to slaughter any deceivers. You may read books, but be wary. Understanding a sacred text can realign the stars. The observatory. The observatory is not visible to the eye of anyone on the outside. It is coated in a thick coat of transparent void. 
It is a spectacle to anyone who enters, but not. The, but those who enter are often killed to hide the true origin of the observatory. Liquid and hogwim forces away the experimental create recreations of the Hyperon guards. Phantoms enter and exit at will, and the walls seem to be fake. Nothing in the observatory is known to be of true nature, except for the observer himself. Observer of the airy celestials. I make my exodius from the city of Orsons. The city tears itself apart. The seekers leave the throne. Besides those scoundrels remaining at the foot of the tyrant, an island, Gan Ganesha, is the last thing I create within the last of my power. My guards patrol the island, as those who arrive make Ganesha their sanctuary. Phantoms are made, if phantoms die out in anguish. I conduct my research here. No figure had to seek me, and a plan for permanent efforts at first sent sentience. What more is there to ask? As the waves collide with the shores, I appear to have found my true home. DLC number two. Ever spreading glades. Mountains upon mountains. This layers the outskirts of the city of Orsons. Within a Fichicus, it is not known whether life persists outside of the city. Lake Mahareb, the windmill, the five virtues, wind carved vessel beneath the vessel, orator, the distortion, entropy kiln, the distorted idol, an enigmatic void, nothing is known about the void, the endower of entropy, turthsayer of endel, Salverti OST. Track 1, Enter Salverde title screen. Track 2, Awaken from Slumber. Track 3, Gravestones. Track 4, Tanaphobia. Tanatophobia. Track 5, Righteous Indignation. Track 6, Hail the Dark. Track 7, Thalassophobia. Track 8, Noises of the Deep. Track 9, Screams of the Abyss. Track 10, Dance of the Carn... Carnivalescue. Track 11, Burn Them. Track 12, Dead Quiet. Track 13, Who Brings Death. Track 14, Impersonal Home. Track 15, Two Shunned Spirits. Track 16, Prayer to Saints. Track 17, Those Who Fall. Track 18, Where It All Happened. Track 19, Behind the Stars. Track 20, Aftermath. Track 21, Those Who Without Sanity. Track 22, A Lost Soul. Track 23, Wasteland. Track 24, Beneath the Waste. Track 25, Beast Within the Waste. Track 26, The Citadel or Under Beneath. Track 27, The Legislator. Track 28, Sacred Home. Track 29, The Right Hand. Track 30, The Citadel or Within. Track 31, the Executioners. Track 32, The Citadel, or Peak. Track 33, Prelude. Track 34, Place Without Order. Track 35, The King. Track 36, The God. Track 37, Worthy Sacrifice. Track 38, Fake Existence. Track 39, The Figurehead. Track 40, Deluded. Salverde, DLC, OST. Track 1, Excursion. Track 2, Opalescent Sands. Track 3, Monochrome Dance. Track 4, Bottles Up. Track 5, Mistake. Track 6, Lullaby for a Poor Soul. Track 7, Cavity of Planets. Track 8, Magnum Opus. Track 9, Banished by God. Track 10, Home of the Nomadic. Track 11, Stagnant Yet Sacred. Track 12, Fabricated Waltz. Track 13, The Will of the Wisps. Track 14, Sail into Skies. Track 15, Inner Workings. Track 16, Speak Nothing But Sins. Track 17, To Forge Chaos. 
Track 18, Familiarity. Track 19, Ignorance. Track 20, To Sin Against Existence. <laughs>